What is going on, guys? What's up? We're here. It's been a, been a while, been a minute since I've been on the stream, that's for sure. I know you're a lot more accustomed to doing streaming than I am. Not as much as I should be, but we're getting back into it. Hey, hey, you know, it's a vibe, though. You know what I mean? No, we love it. So, guys, welcome to the first official live stream of Athletically Declined content by the fans for the fans. So, uh, yeah, man, we're going to just kind of get right into it. This is Late Night Rants with uh, Craig and Tyler. And, man, y'all going to get to know us. And one thing about me and Craig, bro, man, we like to jump down some rabbit holes. We have some very interesting sports talk at 1 in the morning. So. Yeah, um, maybe this gets some traction. It could turn into a, a weekly thing where we get on here at 10, 11 o'clock at night or whatever and run some late night rants and see what happens. You know what I mean? We got yeah. plenty of things to talk about, as that, always. Uh, that is for sure. Um, real quick, before we like dive into anything, um, me and Tyler, mostly the rants we get on involve football, um, mm -hmm. NFL. There are some other rants we get into every now and again, but for the most part, if me and Tyler are on a podcast together or an episode, a live, whatever you want to call it, it's going to involve football. So just be ready for that. That's a fact. It gets pretty good. I think I think we have some stuff, man. There's some combos I wish that we would have recorded here yeah, you know, yeah. the past couple of weeks. I mean, good. But uh, you know, one thing that we really like to talk about is kind of like history repeating itself. Kind of looking back, you know, I think one thing that me and you've been pretty good about is when it comes to these young players, we'll talk, we'll just specifically maybe say some of the drafts and some of the things we've called, you know, I know you were, I mean, I'm a Jets fan, as you can't tell by the hat, but uh, man, Craig Dalton was dogging my boy Zach Wilson for a long <laughs> time. I had to drink the Kool Aid because what are you going to do? It's a second round pick. Uh, it's I mean, second was, overall pick. Yeah. Second yeah. overall pick. Yeah. yeah. Like, I mean, you either, you got to buy in, bro. Like we say. Full buy-in. Full buy-in, baby. Yeah. Your boy had it. So, fake it till you make it. Boy, Zach could not fake it in the NY very much. I mean, like, to be truthful, if I was a Jets fan or any fan with a situation like that where a quarterback didn't necessarily work out, like, you're going you're gonna to buy into that until it, there's no buy-in in at all. So, it's like, I don't blame you for buying in one bit. But being on that other side of the fence, you know what I mean? You're going to – you're gonna throw it, throw it back and forth here and there, and mess with you. But I mean, me being a, right. me being a Texans fan is probably where like most of my heart lies as a football fan. Being a Texans fan, we're gonna be in that in that boat this year. So, you, it, right. the tables might have turned for us. You might be able to give me some shit. Hey man, it, it it might turn. You know, I will say this. You know, I ain't gonna try and step too far back in history, but there was a time. In the early 2000s, where a certain quarterback missed a David Carr, there were some full buy in from some Texans fans. Dark, dark times. Leave. Dark times, brother. It's all dark right. All, we've all been there. Some yeah. of us longer than others. <laughs> oh, dear God. Rest in peace, my Jets. Uh, so, we'll it makes you feel any better. We haven't done too much since we became an organization. So, that's cool. Play I mean, that's it. Yeah, I'm not – again, I, I already said – Craig, I already said in the beginning because I'm so bad about chasing rabbits of the two of us. He's like, hey, look, like, you, you, can't, you can't be going down these 16 different holes where he's going the first one. But history repeating itself, isn't it crazy how in the short span the Texans have been a, a franchise, they've kind of repeated themselves in the two all-time greats of receivers that they've had in DeAndre Hopkins and uh, – in, Andre Johnson. I just, I've always thought that was really crazy because they both played very similar styles of yeah. football, right? Big uh, playing, you know, kind of above. I mean, I guess what, you know, Andre was what, 6'3", hop 6'2". Right. Yeah. yeah, they kind of played a little bit bigger, I and feel like. Right. Yeah, yeah, they both great route runners and very much like that big target, uh, you know, just uh, Dre was pristine route runner, I feel like. I used to love watching him play, man. So, all right, I'm going to stop there. I'm not going to go too deep. <laughs> I'm doing good. So, Craig, what are we getting into, bro? Um, I think what we're going to talk about and just dive into a little bit, like Tyler said, we're not going to try to chase too many rabbit holes tonight. This is kind of just like a little test run, quick run. Um, but we're going to be breaking down the 2021 NFL draft 
mostly the quarterbacks in the draft. Um, we're probably going to do like a hit on the top 10, like maybe a redraft of the top 10, things like that. Pretty much just dissecting like mostly the quarterbacks of this draft. Yeah. Which, which is what, two years ago now? So Yeah, c- coming up on three. Some of these guys, yeah, because I mean, typically in, in football, for those of you, you know, maybe hopefully we've got some listeners, maybe that you're coming in from maybe the Bad Dad Pod or something like that, just trying to check out, hey, man, what's like, uh, what's this link over here? Maybe some people that are, you know, your friends of some of us, you know, we know football and you're, you're wanting to get experience. Uh, typically year three is when you start seeing these quarterbacks kind of either they take a slump or they take a step. Yep. I would say that's pretty fair. Um, you know, some notable ones, Eli Manning, right? Eli had, didn't he, he had, was it, I think he had a, his slump, right? It was the yeah. slump in year three, everyone thought. So, yeah, these guys, they all have different timetables. But uh, just to kind of give everybody kind of a reference back uh, this time, right, we've got Trevor Lawrence as kind of the generational quarterback coming out as the highest ranked quarterback since Andrew Luck. So it's a very big deal. Andrew Luck is what yeah. we call the anomaly. I mean, that dude's like, we, that, that's pure talent right there, and right? Before him, it was Peyton Manning. Peyton Manning. Yeah. So Again, history pitting themselves. Where they go, Craigo? What? Where they? I said history repeating themselves. Where did they go? What do you mean? Where did they go? Peyton Manning and Andrew Luck, same team. Oh, Colts. Yeah. Oh. So the Colts. Yeah. 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 Anyway. So are we, are we saying? Oh no. Yeah, you're right. I was going to yeah. say Trevor Lawrence going to the Colts, but clearly didn't go to the Colts. <laughs> so maybe right. the history only repeated itself a little bit. You will see. So, yeah. I mean, Lawrence, big arm. Uh, mobile, I'd say. I'd say, I, okay, this may be a hot take for some, but like, Craig, you know I wasn't high on Lawrence. You know I wasn't. I, I was a Lawrence hater. Yeah. I really was. And I'll own up to it. That's at least one thing I can say as like a, a sports guy. It's like, if I'm wrong, I'll be the first one to say I was wrong. Yeah. I'll drink, I'll drink the Kool-Aid. Kool-Aid tastes good sometimes, especially when you leave it out there and you're looking at it for a while and you're real hot. And you have to deal with Zach Wilson as your quarterback saying, nah, I don't want Joe Lawrence. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I mean, but comparing it to, to Luck, I think right now we're, we're not probably there yet to really understand, right, we're going into year three. I think there's definitely some things there. But I think one thing with Lawrence that kind of gets misconstrued in the media is, is that he's very laid back. Um, mm-hmm. You know, you, you've got a little bit different, you know, comparing him to Luck in, just because that's what the media was doing. Luck was an architect, had a, if I remember correctly, a master's from Stanford in, in architecture, just guru, guy dissecting film like better than than probably some of the greats. Uh, and then you got Lawrence, who again coming from something that you all probably hear guys like in the future, like me kind of driving home, is that I feel like within the last like five, seven years, maybe we'll say definitely five, that some of these quarterbacks coming out because of the way that the NFL or because of the way that the college football is going and it's just trying to score points, they're, they're going to the spread or air raid style offense. And I just think that these guys are having to only do maybe one, maybe two check downs. And I think where you're hindering those quarterbacks on top of already coming out early, like a lot of these guys do, they don't know how to read defenses. So they come in and because we're now in this, microwave generation where you don't have guys sitting behind these vets like a Patrick Mahomes and Alex Smith situation or a Brett Favre and Aaron Rodgers situation, they get thrown out there and they're kind of sink or swim. Yep. So Trevor Lawrence and to me was the guy the guy that even though I was a hater, he kind of I mean Craig and Ferron Craig, but he he had to. Like if any of them were gonna do it, he had to do it. Yeah, I mean, my thing with Lawrence is, is like, dudes are just a specimen from the get go. Like, what's he six seven, six six? Yeah, like six six. Big dude, big big arm. Like you said, like it just. My thing with Lawrence was he got drafted first overall to one of the worst situations in football. So that first year, like with all the dysfunction they had with Urban Meyer and all that, like. That first year, I wasn't expecting a whole lot after, like, the year started to go off. Like, of course, you kind of expect a lot being a first overall going into it. You're like, all right, you need to show us something. But once we started to see the dysfunction with Urban Meyer and him kicking kickers and things like that. like Good Lord. Once we started started to see that, it was more of like, okay, let's see what happens after this year. How does he recover from that? And I think him getting Doug Peterson, a guy that – 
has worked with quarterbacks. We know he's an offensive guy. You know what I mean? Worked with right. Andy Reid and under Andy Reid. Um, so I think once I saw that hire, I was like, okay, they're serious about getting Lawrence what he needs to do to succeed. And like coming into this year, like I even um, did an episode and I believe I, and the guy I was doing it with Nick was almost laughed at me. Cause I said the Jags were kind of like a sleeper team, but it's because I knew that the Jags were going to Trevor Lawrence was going to take that next step. Like I've been a big believer in Trevor Lawrence. It's, yeah. it's, it's one of those ones where it's like, he hasn't shown me, why not to believe into him? Yeah. That first year, but I completely disregarded that first year from everything. You know what I mean? Like it was just a bad team. It was a bad coach, a bad situation. I completely forget about that year altogether. No, I think that's fair. I, I, you know, again, like I'm all, I'm always going to have just a little bit of a little bias just because obviously we, I mean, we got, got to put a situation where, you know, we bought in more on the potential, which at that point when Trevor Lawrence is gone, what are you going to do now? Again, Craig, I know, you know, regardless of my buy-in, I was a Justin Fields guy. I, yeah. I did think Fields was going to be the better pick between Zach and uh, between Zach and Justin Fields. I think it was going to be him. Um, but also, too, you know, and this is for another episode, but I think that we see a lot of these teams start to kind of overthink and trying to act like they're playing chess while everyone's playing checkers, when really, bro, sometimes you just got to play checkers. Like, it's not hard. Yeah, I, I've how many I, I've told you this a lot, Tyler, and I'll keep like kind of how you hammer it down with the these quarterbacks now can't read defenses. I'm going to continuously hammer down on the fact that people are trying too hard when it comes to drafting these quarterbacks. Uh, again, like just to talk about this draft, going into the draft and throughout their whole college career, this draft class, it was always Trevor Lawrence one, Justin Fields two. Somehow Justin Fields didn't get taken till pick eleven and was what right. the fourth quarterback off the board when he was the number two guy throughout the whole draft. Like, and I know I'm skipping ahead a little bit, but these, it, it just piggybacks off what you're saying. Like sure. these teams are just trying too hard to find their next Patrick Mahomes or Josh Allen's or whoever you want to compare to, but it, they're just trying to get, trying to get too cute at the end of the day. And it's, it's backfiring. Right. I, I thousand percent agree with you. I mean, I think that that's a very under, I think underreported on uh, topic in the, in, in the NFL. I think, uh, you know, it's a great example of that. You know, you look at Trey Lance getting drafted three. I mean, you, you give up all that capital San Francisco and we've got that list there. They gave up 2021's first round pick. They gave up 2022's first round pick. They gave up 2022's third in 2023's first. Yeah. For a guy that has only played, I see, what, three games? Yeah. And it, th- it, that sucks because that's kind of like hindsight's 2020. You know what sure. I mean? Like when you're giving those picks up, you're like, all right, this is our quarterback of our future. You're right. not expecting him to come out and n- n- play, what, two, three, four games that first season, and then second season is the starter, comes out, plays two games, right. breaks an ankle, like – you're, you're definitely not expecting that at all, but looking no. back two years later, you're like, you just gave up all this and he's played six games, seven games for your team. Yeah. like, And hasn't looked good while he's played them. You know what I mean? Like, no. granted, we don't have enough info and gameplay and film to actually get a true assessment on how he's going to be in the league. But, yeah, you haven't seen much, to be honest. And I'll say one thing, too, about San Francisco, just in regards to some of the coaches and how they are. I think if any coach is going to turn a quarterback around, it's going to be Shanahan. I'm a huge Shanahan fan. I will go to my grave saying I think no matter no matter Shanahan, if Shanahan ever wins a Super Bowl, I think he will still go down as one of the best offensive minded head coaches of our generation. Period. And Uh, I I can get down with that. I mean, even if alone you look at him as like a quarterback breeder in the sense of like you've got your your Todd McShay's your Mike McDaniels right you know those type of guys coming out of that tree right and and again right Mike McDaniels may be a little too early right but I mean I will say like that offense in in Miami did look pretty good yeah um, and and it kind of sucks too because if you look at what Shanahan has done at like the quarterback position Mm-hmm. with the limited, and I do mean very limited, talent he has had at that position, yeah. kind of sucks because here was this guy that was supposed to be 
a more gifted quarterback, a more athletic quarterback, a, right. a, a guy that he was going to be able to do more things with and open up the offense as a whole kind of sucks that they're in this position now where Trey Lance is potentially not the starter. Is it going to be Brock Purdy? That's a whole nother rabbit hole we can go down. Yeah. But you know what I mean? Like it just, it kind of sucks in that sense because it's like, it almost seems like we're at that point now to where it's going to be a, well, what could it have been? Not, wow, this is right. Crazy. You know what I mean? Like, we don't know if we're going to get that opportunity to see what could have been. So here's a hot take. Let me ask you this. Do you think that that the decision to take Trey Lance was Shanahan's kind of like that in a way was kind of him saying, OK, this is where I'm going to leave my thumbprint and show you guys what I can do with a like kind of a, a chunk of raw talent, if you will? I think in a sense, yeah, because he wanted to put this team over the top. And right. what it, what were they lacking the most in quarterback position? You yeah. had Jimmy G, like, yeah, he got the job done, but, again, didn't put him over the top. So I think he wanted to kind of be like, all right, guys, like, y'all seen what I've done so far. Like, I've got this elaborate run game. I've got these right. nice play action plays I can do and things of that sense. Like, I think he really wanted to open up this offense and take it to a whole other level with a quarterback. Like, and I don't even want to say, like, this talented. Like, he's talented, yes, but, I mean, like, Coming that much out of potential. college, that much potential. That's what I'm looking for. Yeah, like yeah. with a guy with that much potential, it again, it brings it back to what I said. It sucks that we're not going to be able to see it. We still could. Don't get me wrong, yeah. we still could. But as of right now, like we haven't been able to see it. So it's like I really think, like you said, he wanted to leave his thumbprint on this team and see what happens. Yeah, and, and see uh, to kind of relate this to this year's draft. That's why guys like like uh, Anthony Richardson kind of scare me, yeah. right? Because yeah. of guys like Trey Lance, and it's not it's not fair to Anthony Richardson. I think but it is. Where, you think? Again, I, history repeating itself. I Can't get too cute. Like it's all falls into the same category. And see, now you're really starting to jack up some of our guys, probably their draft boards for the upcoming live draft. So, uh, um, yeah, a shameless plug, by the way. Yeah. Um, I don't know, dude. Like, I just – I'm not buying in on Anthony Richardson. I'm sorry. I like, want to, but I can't either. I, like, it's the same thing I feel like with Zach Wilson. Like, I will go – I will continue to say this. I think Zach Wilson, from a talent and potential standpoint, has some of the best – physical talent in that 2021 quarterback class. I do. I think from a standpoint of arm, his athleticism, his agility. Uh, but again, if you don't put that together and you can't read a defense, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. At that point, all you are is Jamarcus Russell. Wait, ain't no way you're saying Zach Wilson's more athletically gifted than Justin Fields. I'm talking about as, as, a, as, as a package. Okay. I got yeah, no, 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 no. Don't get me sideways on that. <laughs> I ain't saying that at all. I was about to say, wait a minute. I no, think no, no, Jordan no. might be just as athletically gifted as Zach Wilson, maybe. Maybe not as quick, but – Okay, I'll give you that. Because I'll be, I'll be honest with you, there's a, there's a few times Zach's rookie year, he, he had a few – broke off a few runs that, like, I thought, like, Sam Darnold was kind of sneaky because I think Darnold is a little sneaky on his speed. But, dude, like – it wasn't just the speed as much as it was how like quick his first step was. It was like, it was wild. But again, doesn't matter. Don't let we ask, Don't care. Let me let me ask you this, and this is kind of setting you up because I already know my answer to this. Is Zach Wilson Will Levis? Are they in the same situation to end up being the same quarterback in the NFL? I think so, because I, I don't so. think Wolves can read a defense. I, I, I think he's again one of these quarterbacks that, and and then I could even throw Mitch Trubisky in that same, same little category. Yo, like, Mimo plays. Thanks for the follow. Appreciate you. Oh, so, yeah. I think just one of these quarterbacks that just popped up the draft boards and had a nice clip and kind of shot up the draft boards and I, I, I viewed them two very similar, um, and then like Anthony Richardson. I, I just can't buy in. Like, let me put it to you this way. I haven't even bought in on Bryce Young or CJ Stroud fully. So how am I going to buy in on an Anthony Richardson when these other two guys that are better and have proved more in the college field that I still right. can't buy in on fully either? You know what I mean? 
but and I think again, like I, I, we agree on a lot of stuff usually, and, and this is no different. I mean, I'm right there with you. I, I don't, I don't look at this quarterback class and th- and feel like that any of these guys are going to do any better than like Kenny Pickett. Yeah, I, just I think don't. I think there's a big gap between like Young and Stroud are together, and then there's a big sure. gap, a massive gap between the next yeah. quarterback in my eyes. So it's like. I, I'm I'm half bought in on the other two, but nobody else. I'm not bought in on any of them. Yeah, I think the problem for me with with Bryce Young, and again, this is this is not fair um, because every situation is different, right? But but when you do look at what's looking at history repeating itself, there's only been one Drew Brees. Yeah. And so when I look at Bryce Young, like I do feel like Bryce Young can read defenses better than. I would even say any of the any of the quarterbacks of the last draft, and I would say of the draft before that, not named Trevor Lawrence. Right. Um, however, the only reason I think it's just a little bit better is because they were running. You know, was it, O'Brien was his offensive coordinator, right? Bill O'Brien, unfortunately, for Brian. Show. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. That's a different story for another day. Yeah, Craig's got some true feelings. Um, Okay, so we again kind of got down a rabbit hole there. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna happen. This isn't a twenty. This isn't a twenty twenty three NFL draft, but let's get back into the twenty twenty one. So we we touched on Lawrence, we've touched on Wilson, Lance, Fields. We touched on um, Mac Jones would be the last one. Like, there's like five guys that we would talk about as far yeah. as quarterbacks in this list. Mac Jones. What are your thoughts on Mac Jones, real quick? Is it Matt, I mean, again, it, it, very classic Patriots style quarterback. Yeah, I agree. Classic. Right. A statue, he's going to do exactly what you ask him. Yeah. And by God, you better forget to spell it out. Okay, so uh, I feel like the next step, right, before we jump into maybe redrafting the top 10 picks or anything of that nature, mm-hmm. let's rank these quarterbacks as they sit today. Okay. One through five. Who do you got? All right. I'm definitely, I mean, I, Lawrence I'm going fields. Dude. The next three are tough because, yeah. What do you, you have? What? Wilson is tough. I get it. Lance, not a lot of info on him. And then Mac Jones, boring Patriots style quarterback. Like, ranking these three in order is kind of tough to do. Dude. Well, I mean, I think it really comes down to, like, would you rather have Zach Wilson as your quarterback or Mac Jones? I, look, you're probably going to hate me for this. My top five would probably be Lawrence, Fields, Mac Jones, Lance, Wilson, just because – and, like, not a whole lot of hate towards Wilson. It's just I'll take the, the potential with Lance because we still haven't seen anything. I don't disagree with you. That, that's what I would have done. Yeah. I, again, I, Zach just it may again system makes a big deal. No, it does. But I mean, at least at least when you look at Mac, we'll talk specifically. Mac put up a pretty put up the best uh, numbers of any of those rookies that year. Yeah, he did. Granted, so it's like you could at least say that put him in the right system. Yeah. He's salvageable. I mean, you can't say that about Zach. You just can't. Yeah. No, I feel and, that. And there's a question mark over Lance, so I don't think it's fair to put him at the bottom of the barrel. Yeah. Um, but just FYI, just for a little bit of context, too, Lawrence's rookie year, it's really bad. Very bad, yeah. I mean, 12 touchdowns, 22 turnovers, 17 of those were interceptions, five fumbles. He started 17 games, 3,600 yards, with a uh, passing rating of 71.9. Very bad. It's not bad. I mean, in, I mean, it's not like Wilson did much better. No. 2,300 yeah. yards, nine touchdowns, 12 turnovers, started 13 games. Well, r- rookie year, we had like Mac Jones. People had Mac Jones as the best quarterback of that class, which is understandable after Correct. a rookie year. You know what I mean? Like, and it was. I feel like people probably had like Mac, Fields, Lance, Wilson, Lawrence, maybe like some version of that order. Like it, I feel like 
it was hard to put these figure out what you had with these quarterbacks after the rookie year besides Mac Jones. Like Mac Jones was in my eyes played to his average potential. It might have a little bit more ceiling, but pretty right. much what you got rookie year is what Mac Jones is going to be from a year to year basis. Yeah, I, th- I agree with that. And, and also too, Craig, we are missing one quarterback one here. And who is that? It's your boy, dude, Davis Mills. Moving on. So <laughs> what we can do. <laughs> see that that's cold, man. That that's cold. Okay, but seriously, this guy's no, numbers for no, 13 no, games. No, Tyler, no. no. I, I've got to read it. 2,600 yards, 16 touchdowns, 11 turnovers, 10 were interceptions, a QB, Q, or a passing rating of 88.8. People, you know what's funny? After the rookie year, people thought Davis Mills was going to be that guy and was going to be the best oh, yeah. quarterback in this class. And I was sitting there just laughing because I was like, it's not exactly. going to happen. Like, I get it. Like, he had decent numbers and he looked decent, but he's. Do you know why? You know, you know what? Go ahead, go ahead and tell us why, Craig. Why did he have a good year? I don't know, actually. I think it it had everything to do with Damian Pierce. That's what I think. Is it wait? Is this last year's number or the year before? Was that this his is rookie, rookie rookie year? He didn't have Damian Pierce. Oh, that's right. Damian was last year. Yeah, Who was yeah. the running back at, that year? Was it was it? Uh, oh no, that was the Hodge squad. It was, it, it was Rex Burkhead. Um, Dare Uga, Uga Booga, Booga, Uga, and Nale, David Johnson and David Johnson, nineteen thousand oh. years old. Like, yeah. Oh my was, gosh! Never mind. I don't know Never why he did wrong. that decent. Um, yeah, that was a just a bad year altogether too. Yeah, that was um, a bad year. Yeah, I mean, yeah, we we talked about him a bit, but I don't even classify him as a quarterback. To be honest, he'll be a backup after this year. Yeah, hundred um, percent. Let's see. What do we want to do next? We want to go into redrafting this potentially? Yeah, go ahead and just do a redraft, and let's go through 15 because that's where uh, Mac Jones was. And I think that kind of okay. cuts off of all the good all right. stuff. So for, I think the first pick, Jacksonville, I don't think either of us would probably take anything different there. I think just with the potential, man, and like how he looked last year, the comebacks he made, like he's just poised to be a winner in my eyes. I, yeah. yeah, I don't think they change. Okay, so move on to the Jets. I, I want to say right now, I think a position of need that year was definitely receiver, and I think anyone with a brain that that could have foreseen what Jamar Chase was going to turn into would say, "Screw it, give me the receiver." Yeah, um, I like that. I think it would be hard for them to not take a quarterback though in that because y'all had what Flacco. Darnold? No, we had Darnold, and the only Darnold's reason still, okay. the only reason why they did that was because they fell in love with Zach. Like okay. they knew they weren't getting Lawrence, and it was basically between: are we going to go after Zach Wilson specifically, or are we going to keep Darnold? And it was real close. Like I remember, like up until like I don't know, week before or of the pro day, it was the pro day where Zach had that crazy throw, yeah. where it was like, oh my god, look at this throw that he's never going to do in a game. Yeah. Um, let me ask you real quick, just because this is how my brain works, being the devil's advocate. Um, knowing what you know now about Jamar Chase and Justin Fields, would you rather have Jamar Chase or would you rather have Justin Fields and what he's done so far and the potential he has as a, a passer, runner, whatever you want to call it? You know what I mean? Like, which one would you rather have? I'd rather have the receiver because okay. the Jets are not set up. They have no one. We have no one right now that I have any confidence saying they could yeah, develop. Y'all made a lot of moves this past draft. So it's like your your team got to where you're at now because of this last draft, not the year before that. So I, right. I'm cool with Jamar there. That yeah. dude's a stud. And he's going to be one of the best. He's Him and him and Jefferson are literally going to end up going down as probably the best receivers to ever play the game or close to it. You know what I mean? Like I know yeah. it's tough to beat like Jerry Rice and those guys, but – it there something the pace they're, the pace they're on is just silly yeah. like it's uh, if i remember correctly didn't jefferson like last year he broke some of like moss's records through like yeah however many games he's played it's silly i mean 
at the very least, I don't think it's even a question of our generation. Yeah, no, hundred percent. And what's crazy too is if Jamar didn't miss the last the few games he missed last year, he would yeah. be on pace with all the records that Justin Jefferson has set so far. You know what I mean? Like for sure, he would, he would be right That's there the neck and neck to break them. You know what I mean? He he still could. Just right. it's a little less likely because he's missed what four or five games now. Mm-hmm. Um, but okay, so moving on to three. They had Jimmy G, San Francisco. Okay, well, let me let me start. Let me say this first. Do we think in this scenario of the redraft, the Niners still trade up for a quarterback? Knowing what we know now. Granted, I feel like this is tough, though, because, again, like we said, we don't have any info on Trey Lance, so I feel like they would still right. trade up and get Trey Lance because we can't really drop him down or move him up because we don't know what we got. Yeah, the only the only thing I would say in this spot would be because I think you got to keep with the trade up, right? Because we're we're t- they traded up, yeah, b- before the draft. Um, would be Fields. I could see that pick if they were looking right. for more of a dynamic guy. I I could see them making that move. Um, because it, again, I, I'm curious to see if the reason why Fields maybe again I don't think Fields can read defense as well. But maybe why he wasn't – he was a little gun-shy was because that old line was not good. Yeah. It's not a good old line. And I know they've made some moves, and it's, and it's getting better. But, I mean, you know as well as I do, like, not unless you're Joe Burrow, like – It's you tough. Can, it's tough, yeah. right? Um, okay, so they probably go Trey Lance there. Um, or you said Fields. Only reason no. I would want to say Lance is just because they had the option for Fields and they took Lance over Fields, so it's like I feel like they would. Make I agree that with that. I agree. With that. Let's just um, let's keep let's keep Trey Lance there. Okay, so we got Lawrence, Jamar Chase, Trey Lance so far. Um, then Atlanta for Atlanta. I think that's easy. Who are you Fields. saying? Just just yeah, Justin Fields. Yeah, I think they so. they they want. Freaking uh, Michael Vick 2.0 in that building so bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I I like that a lot. I think that that's a perfect fit for them. Would be Fields at four, um, mm-hmm. five. Cincinnati took a wide receiver in Jamar Chase originally. Um, there was a lot of talk of O line they should have gotten. So yep. I feel like in this situation. Probably would say they draft an O line. You could make you could make the case for Jalen Waddle, but I think yeah. they only went wide receiver because it was Jamar Chase. I, I agree with that. I think Panay Sewell is 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 the pick there. Yeah, um, I think definitely, so. definitely think you're gonna want either him or Slater, one of the two. And and I would say Panay was. If we're gonna think for them, we're not gonna play chess. We'll play checkers. That's the easy pick coming yeah. out of Oregon. No, one hundred percent. All so right, so Troy. next. Next, we got Detroit. They took O line. Um, they need a lot of defensive help, right? Mm-hmm. We we could say they they go Micah Parsons here, knowing what we know now, or do we think Micah Parsons is a product of his system? I don't know. I think Micah Parsons is that guy. Like I think I Micah Parsons. Micah Parsons has got some like. I ain't gonna say Ray Lewis, but like dude's yeah. built different. Dude's different. Um, I, I don't know. I, I also, you can make the case like I mean they had uh, what's his name there? The Jets traded for him. Um, gosh, I can't think of what his name was, but they had a they had a, a linebacker that they took I think two years prior. Uh, I, I don't know, man. I mean, Slater, Slater's still on the board. I think that's yeah. a good pick if they were going to go offensive tackle. But I do like the defensive play. I think that that Beans that that was what the first year for uh, for their head coach, uh, uh, Dan Campbell. Yeah, Dan Campbell. I, I like that pick. I, I like Michael Parsons. I, I think Michael Parsons is a very Dan Campbell esque pick. I just think it's hard, like. Knowing what you know now, it's hard to let Micah Parsons drop anymore. Like, I know there's guys out there, like you said, Slater, there's JC right. Horn, uh, PS2. Like, there's some guys out there for sure, but I just – I don't see Micah slipping that far down. But let me ask you this. I mean, we – I mean, I think – I'm a big Patrick Sertain fan. 
yeah, I think yeah, I think Pat's a guy, and and you know, cornerbacks are not necessarily easy to find. And you know, they lost uh, Darius Slay. Yeah. So you know that cornerback group, that backfield ain't necessarily super super like steady. This one's tough because it's like Detroit needed so many things. And I mean, they still need so many things. So it's right. like, I feel like there's no wrong pick here. We could say Panay or not Panay, um, Slater. We could say PS2. We could say Micah Parsons. I feel like there's not a wrong answer here, to be honest. Yeah. I think we could maybe just agree to say they go defense. Okay. And and I think I think that would be the move if, if the – if knowing what we know now. Yeah. Especially. So are we saying Parsons or are we saying PS2? I'm going to say Parsons because I think Parsons, from a standpoint of what he's shown and, like, just that star power that's already there, Yeah. Uh, as much as I like Sertan, yeah, I think that, that you can't pass on it. Okay, so we had two Carolina. cornerbacks go after this. We had Carolina take J.C. Horn. I, I feel like they probably take – because they had – who was their quarterback at this time? Carolina, they had – Nobody, right? Well, Darnold, Darnold had just gotten traded. traded. That's right. Yeah. So you would probably say they'd rock with Darnold, right? They traded a second for him, didn't they? Yep, sure did. Yeah. And that's Matt and, Rule's last leg. Yeah, and I don't necessarily trust any of the quarterbacks left. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, I feel like they'd probably go PS2 over J.C. Horn here. Thoughts? Yeah, no, we, if we're, again, drafting this based on what we know now, I, w- I would say so. I think Sertan's more of the sure thing. I think he's shown a lot more, flashed a lot more. Not that J.C. Horn is a, is, is a slouch. Like, I don't think so. I'm a fan yeah. of J.C. Horn, too. I think this was kind of a low-key, kind of solid cornerback class. I, again, yeah. I don't think it was, like, you know, 2022, but definitely was, you know, those 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 quarterbacks were nice. No, for sure. Um, all right, so next we got Denver. Who, like I said, took a cornerback as well. They put took PS2, um, Patrick Sertan. So, do we think they go cornerback again and get JC Horn here? We still have a Devontae Smith on the board. We got um, Jalen Waddle on the board. We got Slater. Um, like, there's still some guys on the board here. Yeah. Uh, who's the quarterback for Denver 21? Is, is that still uh, old boy from uh, Oregon? Drew Lock, Drew Lock, yeah, yeah. It Not is. Oregon from uh, Iowa, right? Was yeah. Iowa? Yeah, uh, Iowa. Yeah, he's I a think hawk. So. Yeah, uh, I think they probably still rocking with him at that point because what that was the second year, I think, twenty twenty. Yeah, think he didn't. Came out. He didn't have much time. Yeah, so I think they probably stick with quarterbacks. Personally, if they're going quarterback here at Sertain, I think J.C. Horn. Still, I think it's a it's yeah. a good pick. Yeah. He's a dog for sure. I like that. He's scrappy. He reminds me of like a DJ Reed type. Yeah. Dude gets it done. All right. So next we have Philly at 10. They went Devontae Smith. I almost want to say that was a trade up, wasn't it? Uh I believe yes, for the Cowboys. Okay, so they got the pick from the Cowboys. Yeah, they um, traded uh, 2021 first and 2021 third. Do we think they go Devontae Smith here, or do they go Jalen Waddle because Jalen Waddle is still on the board? Oh man, that's tough. That is tough. I think Jalen Waddle's had the better. Oh, that's still even like I don't know, man. I think Jalen is the same. I think so too. Yes, I think because I think edge. Yeah, Jalen's bigger, bigger body guy. I think I would go as far as saying I think Jalen's a little faster. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I I think I think also too Jalen could be portrayed as more of a. Typical number one. Than That's Devontae. what I was going to say. Yes, yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, I think. See, Devonte always gave me like Marvin Harrison vibes. I could see that. My thing with Devonte is, is the dude is an absolute dog. He's so undersized, and people look over him so much because of it. Right. But 
he can get away with being a number one in this league, but I think he really thrives in what we saw this previous year where he can be a number two and then have A.J. Brown being that guy that takes some deep routes and he maybe hits some – run. Right. Devontae did it all. You know what I mean? Like this He's such a smooth route runner, dude. Yeah. Like, I – like, honest, honestly, like, Devontae just, like – his route running is so good. Yeah. And and the dude just like he just gets open. Like he's not gonna blow past you, but I mean, dude's gonna shake you. Yeah, hundred percent. Um, so we take Jalen Waddle here for Philly. That would be yeah. crazy to see. Um could you imagine okay. if they still made the trade for freaking AJ and you had AJ and Waddle? And Jalen Waddle? I oh mean my god. I feel like they practically would because again, you some can make the argument that Devontae Smith and Jalen Waddle are close to each other. So it's like if you already have Devontae Smith and you traded for A.J. Brown, I could see them still doing that. I mean, Miami had Jalen Waddle and traded for Tyree Kill. So it's like yeah, it's definitely a thing. Well, it would happen. I mean, the Bengals. Yeah. I mean, you could argue the Bengals have three three guys on that team that could be number one receivers. Yeah. I don't think Tyler Boyd so much. I do think he's good. But the other two, absolutely. But what I'm saying is – on some teams like yeah, yeah 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 like if you take tyler boyd and put him on like new york giants the, he's number one all day long the, all day long yeah put him on the texans he's number one all day long yeah um okay so we got 10 was waddle 11 is chicago they took fields originally we have fields already off the board right he went to atlanta trey lance went to san francisco again they really need a quarterback, but I'm not liking any of these quarterbacks left. You have Mac Jones, Zach Wilson. That's it. So it's like, what do they need here? Do they have still have Mitch Trubisky at this point? I feel like they did, right? Yeah, but I, so if I remember correctly, if my memory serves me right, there were some rumors that Chicago liked uh, Mac. Really? Yeah, and, and again, I don't know if Mac, what we know of him now, not again, like I know how we ranked them, but still I just don't think that it was bad enough for a team that was so awful. Right. And needs quite literally everything. So they would just get next, next available player, right? I would think so, dude. I mean, next field player or or they go quarterback. I mean, the guys that are that are left. I mean, I, you could say O line if you go O line. You've got Rashard Slater still there, who was a Pro Bowler. Yeah. You also could go off the the um, the gener- the generational talent of Kyle Pitts. I mean, everybody talks about he's this. Athletic freak. He he was taken so high, and was always mocked so high. Granted, he hasn't worked out, but I feel like that's not his fault. That's just underutilization from the Falcons. I didn't, dude, I didn't even think about him still being there. Yeah, he's still there, and he you he was mocked so high in like every draft. You know what I mean? Or every mock draft, he was always up there. So again. This we're doing this a hindsight draft, and I know he hasn't necessarily done the most, but again, it's more of an underutilization, not so much his fault. You know what I mean? I wonder if Philly would have taken Kyle Pitts like in that situation. They still had Zach Ertz and Dallas Goddard, so I don't think so. Was Zach was Zach Ertz still on the team in twenty one? Or was that his first year in Arizona? Oh no, he got wait. No, I think he got traded this past season halfway through the year, right? Or did he get traded halfway through the year the year before that? So he would have been in Arizona, so they would have Dallas Goddard. And I I think they really like him. I don't know if they would have went Kyle Pitts. Yeah, but if you're looking hindsight, like, do you like Goddard better than you can Pitts? Like, is it that? Goddard was kind of a dog for him this year. I mean, I, I'm disagreeing with you. I'm just, again, just playing devil's advocate yeah, here. Yeah, like, yeah. we're talking generational talent. And you know how many teams like to run dual wide receivers. I, I, I still think probably that, that they would they would go waddle uh, again. But just 
now remembering now that we've got Pitts still on the board. Hmm. I feel like that, Chicago might go Devonte or Pitts and or O line. Like it's got to be one of those three, right? I'd say Devonte because I think going twelve now with Dallas. I think Dallas would go Kyle Pitts. That's a very Dallas type move. Well, Dallas or wait, hold on, let me look at this because. I remember Philly jumped somebody to get Devontae. Eagles trade up to number 10. They traded with the Cowboys. Was I it the Giants? They, I want to say the Eagles jumped Chicago to get Devontae Smith. So I feel like Chicago wanted Devontae Smith. Then there you go. There you go. So you go Devontae and then Dallas. Dallas is called Pitts because – well, Dalton Schultz on his last year of his contract. Was, 20, was or, 21 his last year? No, this past year was. So he, he would have two years. No, left. no. 21 was because 22 he was franchise tag. He was franchise tag twice? Or No, he was. You're right. Yeah, yeah. Because he's on the yeah. Texans now. Yeah. Yeah. So, so they would have done that. They would have definitely went call pits, 100%. Yeah. Um, so we have Dallas going call pits at 12. And the only reason I remember that is because my boys tried to go get him, like the opening. They made they threw a bag out there, or they were going to throw a bag out there. It was reported, and they ended up like throwing that tag on him. That's right. Um, okay, so twelve Dallas goes Kyle Pitts. Thirteen, I feel like Chargers still go Rashawn Slater. Yep, I, I thousand percent agree with that. Which again, fourteen, I still think that the Jets go Elijah or Tucker. Okay. And then 15, Patriots, Mac Jones is still on the board. I think they probably go Mac Jones again, right? I know there's been there's been, talks of him, there's been talks of him potentially getting traded or on the trade block. I know. I mean, let's just – I want to kind of look down here. Who's the running back at that point? Damian Harris. Do Ramondre, Ramondre get drafted here later in the draft, I think? Yeah. They drafted Ramondre Stevenson in the fourth round. Okay. The Patriots did. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of going through this draft here a little bit, trying to see, make sure we're not missing anybody. That um, would have been... Man, yeah, it's hard for me to not to say that it's Mac Jones. I mean, Zayvon Collins, man, that's that's a freaking studly pick, though. That's true. Was where when was Amon Ross St. Brown drafted? Was he this draft or the next one? I think it was – was he 20? I think it was 20. Because it was before Maybe. Dan Campbell got there. Let me look here. Oh, wait. Ha! I'm over here typing on, on the wrong computer. There we go. It's freaking elevator music is what we need. Yeah, right. Um, okay, here we go. He was drafted. Oh no, it was. Oh my gosh. Fourth round? Yeah, I was about to say he I couldn't find him on the list, but I just now found him. Yeah. Um Wow. You you, you have him still there. You have um I just saw a guy that I wanted to bring up that I lost on the list. Landon Dickerson is on the board still. Yep. He was taking the second. Najee. Javante Williams. I mean, there's some dudes out there, but I feel like they they needed a quarterback, man. Like Yeah, they did, but man, is I, I mean they didn't have receivers. Yeah, but Patriots never really like having necessarily receivers. I feel like, or at least but they he, did with Brady. 
I know. Right, but what I'm that. saying though is like at this point though, if you know that 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 he's a dude, right? Do you pass on a dude like that? I mean, Ross St. Brown is hard. Yeah, I don't know if you do. Mm. I mean, even Bill O'Brien. Rec- I mean, Bill O'Brien. Even uh, Bill Belichick recognizes talent. Yeah, that's true. Like, so we can say Amon Ross St. Brown at fifteen. Yeah, I. W- I mean, I think so. I like it. But, yeah. So what was their what What did they pick in twenty twenty two? Patriots. It's draft picks. Let's, I want to see what they picked there because I'd like to see what they would have done there. I think it was Cole Strange was that pick there. Hey guys, this is this is the true definition of chasing the rabbits. Cole Strange at twenty nine. Who is still there? Carl Loftus. Who are the QB still on the board? Malik Willis. At 29, if they didn't take Mac in the last draft. They could take Malik Willis. They could have taken Malik Willis because Malik Willis, I feel like, again, not saying he warrants this because I don't think that he's got enough playing time to really know a thousand percent what he is. But, I mean, you make the argument. Yeah. I mean, I I definitely think it would be hard to pass on Amon Ross St. Brown knowing what you know now. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. he doesn't even let you forget it when he talks about how he knows all the wide receivers taken before him in the draft. So, it's like it would be hard to pass on a guy like that again. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, Dude was a stud coming out of USC, man. Yeah. So, I, I like it in there at, five, or at 15. So, we had Lawrence, we had Jamar Chase to the Jets, we had Trey Lance to the 49ers, we had Justin Fields to Atlanta, we had Cincinnati going Penesul, we had Miami going – we skipped Miami. Oh, we did, didn't we? They would have taken Jalen Waddle. And yeah. then it would have been okay. Detroit taking Micah Parsons, Carolina okay. taking Patrick Sertan, Denver taking J.C. Horn. Philly would have just went with Devontae Smith again. Are you sure? Are you okay. sure they would have got Amon Ra? I'll take Devontae over Amon Ra. You think so? Really? I will, yeah. See, I would have taken it's uh, close. I it's would have taken Amon Ra. I would have taken Amon Yeah, okay. Okay. Um, just just because I don't want to go back through this, we'll just say Devontae Smith at 10 again. Um, 11 with Chicago. We had them taking, taking Devontae. Devontae, so we need to Take, figure that out real quick. So would you swap it out with Amon Ra? You could. I would yeah. think so because, I mean, I, like I think that. if you're going to look at that, it's like a, like a you know, 1A, 1B. Yeah. Okay, so Amon Ra, Chicago at 11. 12, they still would have went Kyle Pitts, um, Dallas. 13, Rashawn Slater again. 14, Jets would have taken AVT. And then 15, it would be no Amon Ross. So do we say Mac Jones now? I'd say Mac Jones now at that point. I mean, I, I, I think it's hard to, to, to go away from that pick. So that's our I quick like little that. redraft. Yeah, I like it too. I you know what's funny? I was trying to figure out why Waddle was still on the board and it didn't make no sense. But that's because we literally just skipped over it because I think we right. both registered that Miami was going to go Waddle regardless. Right. Right. Um, yeah, so a little longer than we expected tonight. That's all right. We got anything else we want to touch on on this 2021 little quarterback class slash redraft thing? Um, I don't think so. I think something to remember in here is, you know, I think one thing we learned in 2021, and I'm going to get on my soapbox for a second, Craig, if you don't mind. Yeah. Guys, I, I think, speaking from, again, Jets fan, obviously, so, like, I'm going to talk. There's some bias here on talking about my team, but I think there's a lot of things that we've learned through the Jets starting in 2021. 
starting to get things together. And I think one thing they did incorrectly in, in and showing like how, to me, it exposed like exactly how bad it is right now for these rookie quarterbacks. Getting solid in there as a defensive head coach in 21, right? First year. You've got Mike LaFleur, brother of Matt LaFleur. He's supposed okay. to come in here at some savior like quarterback whisper because he comes from the tree, which is just, you know, we assume. And to me is 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 a part reason why Zach doesn't progress the way he should. And I, I think that. that's because because, first of all, here's a note that a lot of people – that wasn't talked about a lot in the media, but the quarterback coach for the Jets that was specifically picked out to work with Zach, he died in a car wreck before OTAs. I did not know that. Yeah. Wow. So that was a big, big kind of gap that was not filled there. And whenever Zach got hurt, and I'm trying to remember, I, th- I guess it was Mike White came in, I think that. Yeah. And, and he played well. It was like two games. He played really well. It's because John Beck came in, who was Zach Wilson's quarterback coach, like in college, came in and, and they hired him on as a consultant to fill that role. Really? Isn't that interesting? That's, I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. W- wasn't talked about in the media that much. So, I'm saying all that in 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 the sense of you cannot be giving these quarterbacks, these rookie quarterbacks, right, to rookie OCs and expecting them to do well. You can't. For guys yeah. who have never called plays before, they've never worked with rookie quarterbacks before on a hands-on one-on-one situation, unless they were a QB coach, right? Yeah. And I think that that's a misconception that just because they come from a tree and because they're a, you know, qualities, offensive, core, uh, you know, play qualities guy, because I think that's, that's, I'm pretty positive that's what uh, LaFleur was. He was like that and he was like assistant uh, offensive play caller or something yeah. in that regard. I mean, you've got one guy learning while the other guy's learning. How does that work? I, I'm on the fence with that because it's like I like it because they can learn together and find their tendencies together. And I feel like you get a good product at the end of that. Granted, I know that's kind of playing with the fire because it's like, yeah, but they both never done it before. You know what I mean? So it's like, yeah, I feel like the potential for that is really good because you can grow together and figure it out together. But at the same time, it could very well backfire on you. Well, that's what happened with the Jets. Like whenever Mike got let go this last last year in the season, it was like the so stuff that was coming out was like the way he talked to like the quarterback room, right? Like just ripping the soul out of Zach. Like not that he saying like Zach didn't like deserve it, right? Like yeah. not like he played that great, but I mean, us as fans and how we talk about our players, right? Compared to how these guys are on the inside, like as as much as I think Zach stinks, like the next guy, I wouldn't be telling him in front of the entire like room, like. Hey, Mike White, the third stringer, right, runs this offense way better than you. So does Josh Johnson. Like, can't be saying that. Can't be saying that stuff, dude. Yeah. You just you can't, you can't be treating these guys like they're veterans. You can't be, you know, the tough love thing, right? That may yeah. work with, uh, you know, Tom Brady or uh, you know Aaron Rodgers, but that's not going to work with Zach Wilson, who's never been exposed to all of this. None of the like, not to mention he's in the biggest market. In the in in like professional sports in New York, right? So it's something to think about, especially for some of these guys that are you know, and and I, I you know, off the top of my head, I can't think of any of the other ones that kind of had that situation. I, I, Fields didn't have it because he had a what's his nuts that was on there that was still there. Um, Nat Nabby Greg Nagy Nagy Nat Nagy. Not Nagy. What he was he was still the the coach in twenty twenty one, right? I think so, yeah. Yeah, so I don't know. I mean that's just something I just wanted to get out there because again I haven't heard the mainstream media talk a lot about that. I think that that needs a little more attention because at the you know, again, I'm gonna kind of just shorten this because I already said it, but none of these quarterbacks came ready to read defenses, Craig. What is yeah. going on? with the NCAA and why are they setting their quarterbacks up to fail at the next level? 
because they're not worried about them at the next level. They just want what they can get out of them at the moment in time. You know what I mean? Like, I think that's all it boils down to. They want a natty out of them, and then, oh, you're not with us anymore. So good luck. Like, I'm peace. Yeah, like I think, of course, they want the best interest for their guys, but at the same time, it's the same thing with the NFL. It's all a business. It's all about creating sales. It's all about concessions. It's all about right. bringing home a championship. It's all about bowl games. Like it, I feel like they want to do the best they can to succeed, and they don't necessarily care too much about the consequences. So they're going to put in place an easier offense to run because they're not worried about how they're going to be when they go to the NFL because that's not their worry. You know what I mean? Right. That's true. And I mean, it's only gotten worse with the NIL stuff. Yeah. That's a whole nother can of worms we can open up on another day. Yeah. That's but it's just, it, it's disappointing. It really is because, you know, you look at, and, and I'm going to go back to this, this draft, but because it was one of my favorites, the Andrew Luck RG3. Such a great draft. Yeah. Like those guys came out studs. Yeah. Like, came out, like, ripping. Now, granted, Andrew Luck, like, uh, you know, Kim and Lawrence, two of the best, you know, quarterback prospects come out of college. And, and I mean, Robert Griffin, although a flash in the pan, I think if, and, and this is another thing that, that we've talked about that we'll, we'll say for another time, but, I mean, they did that dude wrong. Yeah. And I think they knew what they were doing, essentially, like, to some degree, because they still drafted Kirk Cousins. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'll never forget I mean, that. Yeah, that, that was nuts for sure. But to tie it back in a little bit, like it just, in my eyes, I feel like, yes, the new guys can't read defenses so much. But at the same time, like, I feel like sometimes some can and some can't. Like, you, you had Mahomes and – the guys in that draft, I feel like, came in pretty well and read defense as well. So are we saying that's like the cutoff line? So, like, ever since then, these guys coming in can't read defense as well? Or are but the guys awesome. that have came in since then, are they just worse than those guys? I don't know. Like, I, I in my head, I understand what I'm trying to say, but I can't. Like, right. Like, and I know the argument you're going to make is Mahomes set for a year. I get that. But I'm talking more so – because who was the other – Watson was in that draft. He came out lighting it up from the get-go. Um, who else was in that draft? Wasn't that a quarter – Lamar was in that draft, wasn't he? Or was he the next year? No, Lamar was in that draft because he was picked 25 draft. or something like that or 32. Yeah, so. yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I, I do agree with what you're saying. Like, the recent quarterback – I think it's just the recent quarterback play in a, as a whole has been down – Plus, these rookies coming in have not been able to read defenses. So it's like at some point it's it's got to change, and it could be like you said, maybe we got to get back to where they start sitting under a veteran for a year. I don't know. We'll see, and I think I'm gonna kind of you know put my money where my mouth is. I think we'll see what happens. You know, whenever this trade does happen, I go down with Aaron Rodgers coming to the Jets, and the Jets' whole plan is keeping Zach Wilson and letting him like sit behind Rodgers. I think yeah. we'll see what happens there, right? And I'll, yeah. we'll see kind of if Zach is just bad or if he just hasn't been developed well and got a, the short end of the stick. Because, I mean, no matter how bad Zach is, he has gotten the short end of the stick because he did yeah. get thrown right out there, and he shouldn't have. Yeah. Um, and I think they knew that, right? Like, so but it's again, a bad situation all around. It's a business, though, right? Yeah. It's still a business, and they want to win – it's all about championships, and it's all about that, and then it doesn't make it any better when you got teams like the Rams going out and just absolutely mortgaging the future for the present. That's funny. Um, it'll be interesting to see, though, because we do have, at least in my eyes, and the little – again, I need to watch more film on these two guys, but what I've seen so far, like, it sounds like Bryce Young and C.J. Stroud can read defenses yeah. decently. I so it'll be, it, it'll be interesting to see if these guys can come out and – make an impact from the get-go because I feel like they're more – two. both of them are more refined, I would say, would be the word, you know what I mean? Like they seem sure. a little bit more pro-ready, so it'll be interesting to see what happens with those two guys, I feel like. Yeah, I think also, too, I think Ohio State quarterbacks kind of get a bad rap. Um, and I think, you know, again, it's a stigma just like, you know, Alabama, oh, they're what are they known for, running backs and linebackers, not quarterbacks, right? 
I mean, the, the, the only quarterback to win a Super Bowl that came out of Miami was none other than uh, Broadway, Joe Namath. So, uh, I mean, I mean, you know, you can make to, – To be honest, like, what college is known for quarterbacks, though? There's so few and far between in my eyes. Like, I feel like all the good quarterbacks we have or have had have came from a random college that hasn't put out good quarterbacks. Like, I don't know if you can name me a college that has multiple very good quarterbacks, maybe, like, Oregon, maybe we've had a couple come out of there. Like, I'd say, I mean, I would say Oklahoma. I think. Lincoln, yeah, okay, yeah, you're right. How do I good. not? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you got literally the big. I mean, back to back to back. Now you yeah. could say that that was just you know kind of luck of the draw. You could also say, oh, well, are you calling Baker like a, a good good quarterback? I'm not saying that, but I think Baker's better than. You know, yeah. what, a quarter of the teams? That, I mean, at least, I mean, I'd, I'd rather take Baker on the Jets over what we've got now. I'd take Baker over Davis Mills all day. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Yeah. I mean, so, I mean, we'll, we'll see. I think Strahd, Strahd's just got a different demeanor about him. Like, I mean, if you look back in the last few quarterbacks that came out of Ohio State, Justin Field, Dwayne Haskins, um, tell me if I'm missing anybody else. I mean, I think those are, like, the last two that were there. Joe like, Burrow? <laughs> well, I was going to say, like, you no, could say Joe he Burrow. Could, he didn't really but, play for him. So. But we'll, we'll just stick to Dwayne Haskins and, and Justin Fields. I mean, you know, we don't really know if Fields is 1,000%. We know that he's got a lot of talent, you know. Yeah. Um, but he still needs work. And Dwayne Haskins was, at best, like, a good backup. I mean, Dwayne Haskins kind of looked like he was on a trajectory similar to, like, Teddy Bridgewater. Like a poor man's Teddy yeah. is kind of what he was looking yeah. like. Um, you know, rest in peace, though, Dwayne. But, you know, it did. Uh, It'll be we'll interesting. See. Yeah, man. Well, this has been great. This awesome. is really cool. I uh, really appreciate everybody, you know, that's been watching. And uh, we're going to do more of these, man. This is great. You know, always great getting to hang with the homies, talk football, talk sports. And, you know, maybe we'll uh, next time. I'm, I'm, I mean, I say, we, you know, maybe we'll definitely, you know, maybe have some, some more, some more meat and some more heat to come at you guys with. But I feel like this was pretty good for uh, kind of a thrown together, kind of test out first stream. Yeah, you literally texted me, what, 30 minutes before I got home? Hey, <laughs> you want to go live tonight? Well, sure, why not? Yeah, here we are. Here we are. So, well, cool, guys. We appreciate it. And uh, if you're not already, you know, like and follow uh, the socials, Athletically Declined on Instagram and YouTube, and then Athletic Decline on Twitter. Our uh, boy Angel is spitting out some hot stuff on the daily, on the Twitter, on the Instagram, and uh, yeah. So Masters this week, probably keep an eye out for that. We got uh, Duck Hooks with uh, our boy Nick. He's going to be probably doing some ranting. He's already been fired up with some of the stuff that's been going on. We've been enjoying listening to that. So appreciate you coming in, Craig, and uh, helping helping me out on this and looking forward to uh, the stuff you got planned for uh, for the team. Uh, you got some really cool stuff and you've been talking about. Yes, sir. I can't wait. Um, we'll get some stuff out there eventually. Also, April 27th, don't forget, we will be live. We'll be live. You're going to see these two beautiful mugs and our boy Sly Partillo from Bad Dad Podcast. So it's going to be great. 6.30 Central Time. Can't wait to see you guys all there. Later. Later. <laughs>